there's no need to get tipsy. Relax, reflux, condenser. Subscribe, baby, subscribe. To get the best performance, a superhead radio needs to be aligned. Based on the name, you might think alignment simply means to make sure the radio dial aligns to the correct frequency. That's part of it, but there's more. Our antique radio was originally aligned at the factory, so the original owners never had to think about it. Now that it's aged and we've replaced so many parts though, a new alignment will be necessary to bring it back to peak performance. Essentially, an alignment is using a radio frequency or RF generator to send a test intermediate frequency into the radio circuit. Then, using an instrument to monitor the results, the IF transformers and variable condenser are tuned for peak performance. As you'll recall, a superhead radio turns the carrier frequency signal into the critical intermediate frequency. The job of the IF transformers is to tune the intermediate frequency to be as strong and as pure as possible. The main purpose of an alignment is to adjust the IF transformers to do just that. If you're a little fuzzy about the hows and whys of this, please see my earlier videos in this series where superheterodyning and IF transformers are explained in detail. To do a proper alignment, it's important to know the IF frequency the radio was designed for. This is sometimes printed on the chassis, but often you'll need to do a little research or find the schematic. In our radio, and in many All-American 5s, the intermediate frequency is 456 kilocycles. 455 is also common, and rarely some radios also use oddball frequencies such as 170, 210, 470, or others. I was fortunate to have not only located the schematic for our old Emerson 108, but also a useful sheet showing the parts list, general notes, and adjustment instructions. Aligning an All-American 5 radio is possible without the instructions though, as the process is similar no matter the radio. As you can see, the instructions state that an external oscillator and output meter connected to the speaker voice coil terminals are required. The external oscillator is now more commonly referred to as an RF signal generator, such as the one I used shown here. I also own this fancier generator, which in addition to AM, can be used to align FM radios and stereos. Instead of a multimeter, I use this oscilloscope. Either is fine, but I prefer an oscilloscope as it not only shows the output level, but also the waveform shape. I find that adjusting the output shape for maximum symmetry gives a slightly better alignment. Here, you can see the IF signal being injected into the radio from the RF generator on the left, and I'm monitoring the output on the oscilloscope on the right. It's important to note that the RF generator adds a modulated audio tone to the signal, just as a radio station adds audio information to the carrier frequency. This allows us to measure the amplitude and quality of the tone at the speaker while we adjust the trimmers for maximum performance. Before I begin, I made this quick drawing to show the recommended steps to align the radio and the locations of the trimmers that require adjustment. Step 1 is to turn the variable condenser to the unmeshed minimum capacitance position. Step 2 is to connect the positive output from the RF generator to the grid cap of the 6A7 converter tube. I actually recommend clipping the output lead to the insulation of the grid cap wire instead of directly to the cap. There is no high voltage on the grid cap, but still this is safer overall. And as the instructions note, always use as weak a test signal as possible when aligning the receiver. The negative output from the signal generator should be connected to the radio chassis. For safety's sake, whenever you connect a test instrument such as an oscilloscope or signal generator, make sure the device under test is powered through an isolation transformer and the test instrument is powered normally through your home wiring, not the isolation transformer. Having a device, especially one with a hot chassis such as an All-American 5 radio, connected to the same common as a test instrument is dangerous and can ruin your equipment. Step 3 in our alignment is to adjust the RF generator to output 456 kilocycles and to adjust the IF transformer trimmers for maximum response. Note that the second IF transformer is mounted on the bottom of the chassis but the trimmer screws are accessed from the top. Do one transformer at a time and go back and forth between them until the best result is achieved. 
keep the output of the RF signal generator as low as possible to ensure that the transformers are as highly tuned as possible to the intermediate frequency. Remember, the trimmers vary capacitance, not resistance. You're not trying to simply turn the screws fully clockwise for maximum output the way you would a variable resistor. Maximum output will be reached when the transformer is best tuned to 456 kilocycles, and this will likely be achieved with the trimmers close to the midpoint. In this short clip, you can see and hear that the IF has been peaked for maximum output and a symmetrical waveform on the oscilloscope. If a multimeter is used instead of an oscilloscope, the trimmer should be adjusted for maximum voltage. If you have one, use a multimeter with an analog display as it makes finding the peak level easier than with a digital display. Peaking the IF is also possible without a meter by simply listening to the speaker for the highest volume output. Volume levels can be deceptive though, so using a meter is always the better choice. Be very careful when adjusting IF trimmers. The first rule is to never turn them unless you know what you're doing. Randomly adjusting the trimmers in the hopes of fixing a radio can put it so out of alignment that bringing it back will be extremely difficult. The second rule is to turn the trimmers as minimally, slowly, and as gently as possible. Many IF transformers use adjustable iron slugs that break easily, and if they do, your carefully restored radio may never work correctly again. The third rule is to use an insulated driver. If a trimmer screw and the IF can are shorted, a high voltage shock will occur. It's generally preferred that plastic drivers designed especially for alignment be used. In addition to reducing the possibility of a short, the plastic won't interfere with the IF signal the way a metal one might. Often though, you'll find that using plastic alignment tools with antique radios isn't practical as they're too flimsy to turn the trimmers. I actually almost always use this small metal screwdriver that I've insulated with heat shrink. It's stronger and I generally don't find it causes any interference that affects the alignment. Steps 4 and 5 of the alignment aren't absolutely necessary as they're done to peak the wave trap filter. The wave trap is used to reject external signals that operate at or about the same frequency as the IF, which isn't much of a concern nowadays. To learn more, please see my earlier video in this series where I discuss the wave trap in detail. It's simple to align the wave trap though, so I went ahead and followed the instructions. First, one end of a 200 picofarad capacitor is connected to the antenna input and the other to the RF generator. Using a capacitor this way is often called a dummy antenna as it helps better simulate a real antenna. Here you can see I've made a dummy antenna by attaching the capacitor to this terminal and encasing it in heat shrink. It's worth experimenting with this though as I generally skip the dummy antenna and opt to not directly connect the RF generator to the radio at all. Instead, I simply attach the alligator clip from the generator to the insulated portion of a wire connected to the antenna input. As with step one, where we needed to connect to the grid cap of the converter, loosely coupling an RF generator signal to the radio this way is safer and better simulates real world reception. Once the RF generator is connected, its output is set to 456 kilocycles, and this time the wave trap trimmer is adjusted for minimum response, not maximum. Remember, the job of the wave trap is the opposite of the IF transformers. At the antenna stage, we want to block signals operating at the intermediate frequency, not enhance them. Once the IF transformers and wave trap are aligned, the variable condenser is aligned to enhance the radio selectivity, performance, and dial pointer accuracy. The variable condenser has two trimmers, one for the section that tunes radio stations, and another for the section that tunes the oscillator. As we learned in the earlier videos in this series, these sections need to be tuned to be exactly 456 kilocycles apart, no matter where the dial is pointed. The following steps will help ensure that's the case. The first step is to adjust the variable condenser so the dial points to 1400 kilocycles. Next, the output of the RF generator is connected to the antenna input, either using the dummy antenna or loosely coupled method. And the output is adjusted to 1400 kilocycles. The oscillator and antenna trimmers are then adjusted for maximum output at the meter.
We start with the oscillator trimmer and go back and forth between the two trimmers until the peak reading is found. The instructions don't call for it, but it's also a good idea to repeat this process for the other end of the dial by tuning the radio to 600, adjusting the RF generator to output 600 kilocycles, and again fine-tuning the oscillator and antenna trimmers for maximum gain. Go back and forth between the high and low end of the band until you find a good compromise where the output is strong and the dial is accurate at both positions. Many antique radios won't have terribly accurate dials, so do the best you can and don't worry if the pointer is a bit off. After completing these final steps, the Emerson 108 was successfully aligned and performing well. At this point, the restoration was just about complete and only a few steps remained to wrap up the project. Please join me for the next and final episode in this series where we'll take care of a few small touches, do the final assembly, look at all the old parts we replaced, examine our results, and finally demonstrate the radio playing in all its restored glory. To stay updated, please subscribe and click the bell. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.